for joining us again. And we are here tonight at the Honeycomb. We just interviewed JD, and now we're interviewing Jay Rawls. Jay Rawls, those Jays are popular tonight. Thank you for joining us tonight. No problem, I'm glad to be here. So Jay is here tonight because on my shows, I always do a health show. My mother passed away at the age of 66 um, from complications of diabetes. So I make sure that I talk about health because your health is your wealth, right? Without your health, it doesn't matter how much money you have in the bank account. It doesn't matter what kind of car you drive or what kind of house you live in. Your health is your wealth. So I'm, I'm, I'm pushing that movement. That is a part of the Ellen movement. And uh, Jay is real special to me because uh, we both work out with the same trainer. And... Uh, she is a friendly person. When I walk in, she says hi to everybody. And, you know, being out here in a public figure, you pay attention to people. So I'm looking at her, and I'm seeing the way she engages. But that's not the best part of Jay. The best part of Jay is Jay has two little girls, Joy and Dee Dee. They are adorable, and you will see them on my YouTube page. And when, when Jay comes to the gym, like, I barely get out of bed for the gym. But when Jay gets out of bed, she has to dress these two little girls, and she comes to the gym. And if she is on a rope doing this, and Dee Dee decides she's coming in the middle, Jay has to stop her workout, and she goes and tends to her kids. And I think right then and there, nobody has any excuses. So thank you for giving us an interview today. You're welcome. You're welcome. So let me ask you, uh, you lost 120 pounds. Yeah. What motivated you? What was the beginning? Because I think we all have our points that we reach, right? right? I'm not going to say an aha moment because that's, that's not an aha moment. That is the valley. Right. When you get to that valley, tell me, what was your valley to make you say, you know what, I am going to go from this. I'm going to transition. I'm going to do what I have to do. Well, the valley for me was basically I had an Italian leather couch Twelve hundred dollars, mm. and I laid on that couch twenty-four-seven. If I didn't go to the restroom, I was on the couch. Mm. If I didn't eat, I was on the couch. Mm. And at two hundred eighty-seven pounds, size four X, size twenty-six, I was very depressed. And I said to myself, "When is it my turn to change?" And a young man by the name of Maurice Elion, he came over one day and he was helping me clean up because I couldn't even do that. I had to slide up and down the stairs. Just to get up, up and down the stairs, I had to slide against the wall. Mm. And um, he said to me one day, he says, Jay, I said, yeah. He says, I noticed that every time you get upset or angry or whatever, you go straight to the refrigerator. And right then and there, I understood that I was an emotional eater. I didn't know the title at the time, but that's exactly what I was. And I said was an emotional eater. Jay, I myself, um, and that, that, that's powerful because people don't understand. I also used to live in Left Rock City, and I remember when I was over 300 pounds myself that I would dread walking two blocks to the train station. And people don't realize what weight it stagnates you to the point that you're so emotionally broken. Um, and I used to think, oh, my God, I have to really walk to this train station. Um, and it would kill me. And like right now, I can run to the train station, right? And that's yeah. that's power. That's Very. that's power and change. Very. So you so you said you you laid on the couch and and after that, you started taking care of business. Tell us exactly what did you do? Well, the first thing I did was take my twelve hundred dollar couch and toss it out in the rain. There's nothing wrong with it. I hear that. But what was wrong with it, not physically, was the fact that it was holding me hostage. So in order to get away from that. I took it, put it outside in the rain, and I kept moving on. I was at 19, 19 taking 19 plus pills a day. For, I, for, for problems that you was having yeah. medically? And I had over 45 illnesses. I had a minor stroke in 2009, and thankfully, you know, to God, I did not have any lasting effects that's very, that you can see. However, that wasn't enough. I said, no, you're going to have to do something else. So after my doctor told me, she said to me, if you don't have gastric bypass surgery, you will not be here. That's how bad off I was. So, uh, le that, so let's talk about that. Gastric bypass surgery. A lot of people, and I did a, I did a weight, loss uh, weight loss show about this. That's, that's powerful. Because some people are against it. I myself, 13 years ago, had gastric bypass surgery, as you did, because I was on every diet. It was the last 
alternative to me. It doesn't make it right. It doesn't say, oh, you can eat anything you want. It's restrictive and it is serious business, but it did help me. It's the best thing. I, I would never say that I should have never did it. I, do you feel the same way? I feel the same way. And I'm yeah. glad that she made me do it because I wasn't going to do it. Mm -hmm. But when she said I was at death's door, mm -hmm. I had no other choice but to do it. Right. And I think that when people tell you you have children, I don't know if you had children at the Absolutely. time, but even, but even in that life, even in that yeah. life, when somebody tells you this is a life or death decision I think that we really sit down and think about we either gonna live or die overweight 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 so let me let me say this to you now let's whoo full blast into the future you look amazing you look amazing you look amazing you look amazing and what I said about your daughters is absolutely yes. true tell me how how was that because listen the truth of the matter is honestly my girls are older I have three daughters my girls are older so it's easy for me to say listen mommy's going to the gym I'll be back I'll go do my hour workout and I get back home but you got a mission to do tell tell them because Honestly, there's no excuses None. for anybody who's trying to lose weight when you hear this woman's story. And this is why I'm doing this, because she is a great example on how there are no excuses. If you really want to do something, you just do it. I, I was I, When we rolled up to the gym the other day, you was yeah, getting out the van. Yeah. I went over there, I ran, and I helped her. I grabbed Dee Dee's hand. I, 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 she was pushing Joy in the stroller. That's so powerful. Tell me, tell me what, what is that? as a mother and a woman who is going into a new self. How was that? Well, first and foremost, it took us, my husband and I 21 years to have children. They told us we could not have children. And I said to myself, I'm determined enough to prove you wrong. Mm. So after I did have my surgery, after I started losing the weight, then I had my first child, which is Joy. After, this, after her, they said, there's no more children. I said, okay. I said, watch and see. Mm -hmm. So after that, I had Didi 20 mm -hmm. months later. Mm -hmm. So. With the two, my two lionists, as I call them, they are watching me. And so I have to be the best example, number one, for myself. Absolutely. Because I must love myself first. Absolutely. If I don't love myself first, then I'll accept anything, and I'm not doing that anymore. So I have to show them my perseverance, my determination to be the best that I can be. Mm -hmm. Because if I don't do that, they will turn into what I used to be, and I don't want that. That is, that's a powerful thing. Let me, let me just say this. Um, God first. And I'm telling you, I don't care what doctors say. I don't care. Right. I learned that. I don't care what doctors say. When God has the last say so in our life, that is it. I am faithful. I wouldn't be where I am. I wouldn't lost the weight where I am. I wouldn't anything, the knowledge, the understanding, the wisdom, follow his direction in everything. And your life can change God and everything. God is first in everything. Let me just say, you're wearing this wonderful outfit. I hope I hope we get in this. I hope we get in this. We hope, and it, isn't it funny when we're in the gym, we're all sweaty, faces all bare, hairs pulled back in the ponytail, we sweating with scars and hat on, and then we come out. That's the wonderful thing because the thing about it is, as women, we always live in the insecurity, people. And when you are able to say, listen, I'm not who I used to be, and I'm walking into what I want to be, and I'm not that person no more, people get afraid of that. They become fearful of you because now you are standing in your power through the grace of God. Let me say this. As fabulous as you look tonight, I know we had a conversation, and you said you're so used to buying certain things. Yeah. The mind sometimes is messed up because you'll still go in the store and think you wear a large, right. and you mess around and you're a medium or a small. Right. I had on a small dress at from Forever 21 right. yesterday, right. and I was wearing her, right. and I felt good coming from a 4X. Right. Tell me that feeling. I, too, was a 4X, like I said before. And even when I went to the store, look at this outfit. This is what I picked up. Right. And I was in the mirror, and I said, wait a minute. If we tuck it a little I bit more, we can really see shape here. Really we can really see shape. Yeah. yeah. OK? Yeah. All right OK? Now. This All was, right. I mean, literally, yeah. I, my, my stomach was literally here. Yeah. I, I appeared as though I was nine months pregnant. I had no children at the time. Right. So. That excuse, I'm sorry, most women say it's the babies. No, it was me. Yeah. I didn't control what I put in my mouth because of what I was feeling. So I said, I'm not doing that anymore. Mm -hmm. And I have to now conquer the fact that I don't wear a large. Stop buying large. Oh, hallelujah. That's right. All right. This is what I took off the shelf thinking that I, this is what I fit. 
it's not what I fit. This is what I wear. That's right. Let's so that 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 is so powerful. That's so that's so powerful. I'm so I'm so so proud of you. Let's let's look into the camera and let's let's look at the woman or the man that's laying on that same twelve hundred dollar couch that you was laying on, and hopeless. Right. And feeling like I'm just big and I'm not worth anything and nobody likes me and I'm ugly and people make fun of them. What, give them an encouraging word before we leave today. Well, what I would say is first and foremost, you must like yourself. And when you like yourself, you start. I don't care if you walked up the stairs. And that's the only thing you did. You started. Start is the beginning of everything. You must start somewhere. I'm not looking for you to, to get on the treadmill, run a mile, run two miles. That's, you're not going to be able to do that physically. So start by going up the stairs one extra time a day. Then do it twice the next day. Then keep building from that. Find a great trainer, <coughs> Malik Ali, <laughs> bodybangout.com, and, <laughs> and find someone. If you're not going to come to him, find someone who is willing to help you get to your goal. Make a goal. Once you get to that goal, make another goal, and then another goal, and another goal. So I had a goal to lose weight. I lost the weight. Guess what? I have to now build my mama. Mama got guns, everybody. You know what I'm saying? Everybody, she got guns. I'm cuts right now. So you always have to make one goal. Start that goal. Get to that goal. Then start another one. Never stop. Never stop. Never stop improving. Never stop. Never. Listen, I want to congratulate you. Thank you. you are beautiful. You. Keep trucking. Keep going. Malik Body Bangout is our trainer. And if you want to be trained, if you want to find somebody else, um, he is on Instagram. He is on Facebook. You can look him up. DM, DM him. I am him. Jay, I'm very proud of you. We will continue to stand on each other's shoulders to make it through this thing. Remember, your health is your wealth. Two babies she brings to the gym. How old is Jay, uh, um, Dee Dee and um, Joy? Dee Dee just turned two, and Joy will be four next month. Joy will be four. If and Jay, I'm 48. I'm, can I, can, I'm trying to be like you at 48? Yes, All right. That's you can. I'm, absolutely. Yeah, and you I'm will. Trying. You I'm, will. I'm, I'm trying. <laughs> Jay, thank you so much thank for uh, joining us tonight and giving the inspiration to yes. people out there to understand that your health is your wealth. And all we want to do in the LM movement is push people to make conscious decisions and take it, like Jay said, one day at a time. Change the little bitty things. You'll be amazed after three to six months, after a year, um, the way that you can be. Thank you again for joining us here. Your health is your wealth. People, let's get up. Join me on my YouTube page, Latoya Monique. Let's talk about it. Join me on my IG, Latoya Monique, Let's Talk. This is a movement. We're making it happen. Thank you for joining us again. And we are out. Thank you.